Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you are all doing very, very well. So in today's video, we're gonna talk all things meal planning, okay? So we're gonna talk about how I go about doing my meal planning and I'm gonna give you four tips and tricks that I use every single week when I'm planning my meals for the week. I just find that by doing these things, it makes everything so much quicker, so much easier and I end up with really yummy food for the week ahead. So you might think, what is the point of meal planning? And I know lots of people don't do it, but personally, I find it just makes life so much easier. It helps me to stick to a budget. It is allowing me to make healthy, nourishing food, and it's also allowing me to be faster when I'm going around the supermarket, in all honesty, because I am turning up with a list and a set of things that I know I need to buy for the week. The other reason that I do it is because I have a very busy schedule and so sometimes I have to plan when I'm going to make things in advance so that I can have my own like ready meals. I like eating home cooked meals. If I know what I'm eating I can get it out of the freezer in advance, I can meal prep things in advance and it just makes things so much quicker and then I know that I'm eating things that have good ingredients and tasty food at the end of the day because a lot of stuff that's pre-packaged in the supermarket I tend to find doesn't taste that good unfortunately. All right, so tip number one is write it down. So if you're making a meal plan or a shopping list or whatever it is, write it down because if you think you're gonna remember it, I'm telling you, you are not gonna remember it. You can literally write it down old fashioned style pen and paper, but personally, I prefer to use Notion, which is like an online site, and it just allows you to write things down, you get blank pages, and the great thing about it is I can access it both on my laptop and on my phone. So I tend to plan things out on my laptop for the week, and then when I go out shopping, I've got my shopping list, on my phone. So the way that I personally do it is I make a grid and I have every single day of the week. So I tend to go shopping on a Friday. So it will be Friday to Friday, or well, Friday to Thursday essentially. And for every single day, I will have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack. And I also sometimes have a little column at the bottom that says meal prep. And that's just if I have an early start the next day and the day before I need to prep any of my meals, i.e. make a sandwich or cook some pasta or something like that. So I have that column in mine as well, but being completely honest, do whatever works for you. Literally just write out, if you only ever plan your dinners, then just write out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then write down what you're gonna cook for dinner next to it. Just do what works for you. The other thing that I found really helps is having my shopping list in the same place. So in Notion, I've got my shopping list and personally, I like to try and shop locally and use the little independent shops. So I actually have little separate columns for each place. So I have a column for the butchers. I have a column for the market where I get my fruit and veg from. I have a column for the zero waste shop that I go to. And then I also have a column for supermarkets. So that's for anything that I can't get at any of those other stores. I do also sometimes have like a miscellaneous one. If I know that when I'm going out shopping, I need to go to the post office or go to some other shops like the pharmacy, etc. So I just batch things and then it means when I'm out shopping, I can just go to that list, see what I need to buy in that shop and it just makes things so much quicker and easier. Tip number two when it comes to meal planning, check what you already have in your house. So this might be going and have a look in the freezer. Do you already have meat out there? Do you have fish out there? Do you have any leftovers from previous meals you've cooked. So for instance, you might have batch cooked a big thing of spaghetti bolognese and you've got portions of that outside in your freezer. Do you already have rice, tin tomatoes, pasta in your cupboards? Do you already have things in your fridge like butter, like eggs? All these sorts of things, what do you already have in your house? And then, you can use these as ideas for meals. So for instance, I might have a butternut squash outside. 
Um, and to me, the first idea that pops into my head is, okay, I'm gonna make butternut squash mac and cheese this week to use up that butternut squash. So I'm effective, in my mind anyway, as people say, girl math, in my mind, I'm saving money because I'm using stuff that I already have in my house and it's not going to waste. So I'm gonna use up that butternut squash and I'm gonna make butternut squash mac and cheese. Like I said, I might have some minced beef in the freezer. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, what can I make with that minced beef this week? Okay, I'm going to make a spaghetti bolognese or I'm gonna make a lasagna with it. And so just using those things that you already have in your house means that you aren't buying in loads of food that you don't need that's just gonna sit there and if it's fresh fruit and veg and stuff, it potentially might go off. I mean, things like meat you could put in the freezer and that's not a problem, but I like to just go around, see what I already have and try and formulate meals based on those ideas. Tip number three is check your calendar. So I think this for me is the thing that has made the most difference, is looking at my calendar each week, seeing what days I'm busy, what days I'm out, whether that's having lunch with friends or out with work, and also checking if you need to make anything extra. So for instance, this week, I need to make some cakes for a local bake sale that's happening at a coffee morning. So I know that I need to go and get different ingredients for that. So really check your calendar, have a look, because some days you might be in a rush. And on those days, you're not gonna wanna cook. You're just gonna want to throw something in the microwave, throw something in the oven, go and have a shower while it's cooking, come back and your food's ready. So on those days, you want to think about things that are quick, simple and easy and potentially have even meal prep stuff previously that like I say, you can just shove in the microwave. However, there might be other days, say Saturday, Sunday at the weekend, where you might be a lot quieter and not rushing around and those might be the days where you decide to try a new recipe or you decide that you're going to have a go at making that really complicated dish that takes a while to cook but actually those are the times where you discover new recipes you discover new things that you like and it can be a great time to batch cook as well so cook quite a few things make double quantities put stuff in the freezer and so then on the days that you're busy you can then just bring those in and you have super quick meals that are essentially like a homemade ready meal, but you know all the things that you've put in them, you know that they're healthy, you know that they're not full of added salt and sugar, and at the end of the day, they just taste really good. So yeah, tip number three is check your calendar when you're doing your meal plan of the week. All right, and finally, tip number four, this might be fairly self-explanatory, but decide on your meals. And by this, I mean, have a think about what you want to eat that week. Do you fancy pizza? Do you fancy something Chinese style? Do you fancy, I don't know, a curry? Do you fancy that Korean sticky beef that you had when you were out a few weeks ago? Honestly, that is my favorite thing to do. If I eat out somewhere and there's something that I really love, I'm like, how can I recreate this at home? Can I make it myself? So have a think about the sorts of foods you want to eat. I would say have a mix of recipes that you know you like, food that you know you like, and then a couple of new ones that you want to try. Just because if you're constantly trying new food, it tends to take longer to make new recipes and new things. And also there's a small chance that you actually might not like it. And then that's a bit of a shame when you spent time cooking and making it and buying these new ingredients. So yeah, try and mix those things up. If you need ideas for new recipes or anything, I personally like to look at Pinterest, Instagram. I actually really like looking at the Asda and the Waitrose websites. I think they have really, really nice recipes and they tend to work really well, they taste really good and they're often not too complicated to make. The only thing I'd say about the Waitrose one is that sometimes the ingredients are a little bit more pricey, but generally you can swap them out for cheaper ingredients. And yeah, just, cookbooks you might have cookbooks around your house have a look at those another thing I would say that you can do is if you like looking for recipes online like I do start a bookmark folder on your browser whatever browser you use start a folder on there and save the ones that you like and you can even be organized I'm personally not organized but I know people that are and they have folders that say like dessert they have folders that are fish, that are meat, all these sorts of things. And so if you're stuck for ideas for food for that week, you can just go and have a look at those 
bookmarks that you've saved and see if you fancy anything. The other thing that I personally do as well is I do like having sweet treats, I like having snacks and desserts as well and so I, I try to think about a couple of things that I would like to eat that week. So for instance this week I wanted to make um, like a chocolatey protein bar thing so it's just got nuts, dried fruit, cocoa powder, orange zest and then a layer of chocolate on top and that's my sweet treat for the week. I'm also potentially going to make some ginger muffins as well and they'll be like my desserts for the week and then at the end of the day this is completely up to you if you want to do something like that but for me I would much rather bake my own sweet treats because I know what's going in them, I know how much sugar's going in them, I know that it's good quality ingredients and for me it's a pleasure doing the baking. If you're not into baking, you don't really like cooking then that's fine, don't bother. Go and buy them from the supermarket but again think about the sweet treats that you want throughout the week because then you're not just buying loads and loads of different things. If you've just got a couple then you're kind of limiting yourself and then you're not consuming too much sugar and personally for me that's just something that I don't really want to do. I don't want to be consuming excess sugar when I don't really need it. That is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have learned something from this video. If you have any other ideas of things that I've not mentioned about how you plan your meals for the week, please leave them in the comments below. It'd be great to see everybody's ideas and share that knowledge. Personally, I just like to do this meal planning because it allows me to prioritize my health it allows me to know what I'm eating for the week. I get to be organized, I get to plan things, I get to eat the food that I want to eat. And it also allows me to save money because I'm only buying the things that I need from the supermarket rather than just buying things that I don't actually need and I just got tempted by in the supermarket. Let's be honest, we've all done it. And also it helps us to reduce our food waste if we are only buying the things that we need as well. Anyway, please give this video a big thumbs up if you've liked it and hopefully I will see you in my next video. All right, bye guys. <laughs>